Okay, so in this video, what we're going to take a look at is the Voronoi Fracture Object. It's another very powerful MoGraph object that can also work with dynamics. So let's go ahead and dive in. So here we are. We're going to create a couple of things to start with. I'm going to start by creating a plane and maybe even scaling it up a little bit. I'm going to call this our ground. Then I'm going to create a cube and scale this down a little bit, move it up. Now this is what we're going to be placing inside our Voronoi fracture object, which can be found under our MoGraph generators. All right, so it can be found right there. And because it is a MoGraph generator, what we need to do is make the cube a child of it. And what you'll see is that the cube immediately turns colors and it's being broken up into different fragments. And so now we're going to talk about how we can go about kind of refining and customizing those different pieces or fragments. All right. So if we select the Voronoi fracture and we go into the object tab, you will be uh you will see some of the more common MoGraph properties like MoGraph selection, MoGraph weight map, uh, and we also have an effectors tab. So we will see how to use that shortly. Um, the biggest things I would worry about in here would be hull only, which will make this thin, or if you wanna specify a certain thickness, you absolutely can. Um, optimizing closed holes can be helpful, um, and that's kind of really the, the main things you need to worry about in here. With the sources section, uh, we can control how these different fragments and pieces are being generated. By default, we get this point generator, uh, so it's just randomly going to place points and use those to figure out the different pieces or fragments. Um, and you can change the distribution type, uh, but also the point amount. And so changing these, raising them higher um, is going to give us more pieces, more fragments. Now, if you are having any issues with any kind of normals or things not lining up correctly, high quality can sometimes make a difference. Uh, the detailing section we will come back to um, in order to kind of work with that a little bit. Uh, we need to be able to see some of these pieces or fragments. And why don't we go ahead and do that? So with the Voronoi fracture selected, we're going to come over here to our effectors tab and let's just choose random effector. And you can see with that random effector applied, everything kind of scatters. And with that random effector still selected, let's go into the fields tab and create a spherical field. And the spherical field will allow us to control where that randomness gets applied. And so we could have it kind of centered on, or not centered, but uh, apply to maybe one of the corners here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And you'll notice that we do get some objects intersecting. Um, that is, you know, one of the things we run into when you don't use dynamics and you just um, focus on uh, the MoGraph part of the Voronoi fracture. Now back to uh, the detailing section. Now that we can see the inside, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if we don't change anything, we are gonna have a solid object made up of different pieces. And these look pretty natural, look pretty organic. Uh, but if we wanna take this even further, that's where that uh, this enable detailing comes into play. And what it's gonna do is on the interior sides, right? Not the exterior, but on the interior ones, it's essentially gonna apply a displacer that we have some control over. And if you look, you can see when we turned on enable detailing, we got a vertex color tag and we have some basic kind of displacer settings here with a maximum edge length as well as noise setting. So the lower you set this maximum edge length, the more detail you can get out of this. Uh, it also slows down your viewport in perspective. So do be careful with that and also how low you actually turn down that maximum edge length. Okay, and if you wanted to work with the amount of detail, you come down here to the noise settings by adjusting the strength um, and, you know, octaves, scale even, or perhaps even the, the noise type. 
I'm gonna turn off the detailing for now. You could also just turn it off uh, in the viewport and that way you would still get that one rendered. Um, but I'm gonna be just happy with what we have right now. So that's a look at the detailing section. Um, and now what we can do uh, is move on to the geometry glue section. Now this will allow us uh, to combine some of these fragments and pieces together. I'm actually gonna turn off the random field and turn off the spherical, or I'm sorry, the random effector in the spherical field so we can just focus on this, okay? But the geometry glue allows us to stick some of these pieces together. Um, before we do that, let's add some basic dynamics here. Um, I do have a video on dynamics if you guys are interested in that. Just covers the basics, but should be enough to kind of get you started and do some things um, like we're doing in here uh, if you're, you're not familiar with them. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just right click on my Voronoi fracture go to simulation tags and choose a rigid body tag. Now that will apply dynamics, not just to the Voronoi fracture, but the individual pieces as well. And if we hit play, we'll see that they just fall. Uh, they now have gravity applied to them, but they have nothing else to interact with, no other piece of geometry. Um, in order to make a piece of geometry interact with um, other pieces, objects in the simulation, you have to apply a simulation tag to it. Now, we applied a rigid body tag to the Voronoi fracture because it has gravity and dynamics turned on. All right, Dyna or gravity comes really when you have dynamics turned on. Um, what we want is a collider body where um, this object is not gonna have dynamics turned on. All right, you can see its dynamics are set to off. And so it will not move or be affected by gravity or any other forces. And now when I hit play, you can see that we get some nice, interesting, dynamic animation as our Voronoi fracture falls and it separates into um, its different pieces. Now, the um, geometry glue section, as I mentioned, allows us to kind of dis decide how or if we want pieces kind of stuck together. And you have a couple of different modes here. Um, fall off and cluster, the two I'm gonna be working with. We can start with cluster uh, because with uh, the glue type set to cluster, you get the however many pieces you set here. Okay, so maybe you can get something a little bit closer to what you want. Maybe you want some larger pieces instead of the smaller ones. Um, you could really just adjust the, the point type or the distribution source if you really, needed this, but um, so cluster can be helpful. Uh, what I personally like is to use fall off. Uh, now fall off, all right, isn't gonna do anything by default because we have to add a glue fall off. And so we can see this fall off right here and it's looking for us to add a field and I'm gonna add a spherical field, but I do wanna make sure I re rewind first and now I can go ahead and add a spherical field. And I can place this, say, on a corner. And what you'll notice is the parts of this object that are in the spherical field are now get combined. They now have a solid color. And what happens if I hit play? Well, now we have kind of one larger piece and some other smaller pieces. So what we could do is throw in a couple of different spherical fields here. Uh, to add some variation to the size. Now we could do this with the uh, sources, adding some, some more sources, different sources um, in there. I will talk about uh, that a little bit more here shortly, but I still think you can get some better variation using geometry glue, especially if you only need a few larger pieces. This is gonna be a, a faster way of doing it. So if we wanna add a second spherical field to this, what I'm gonna do is first duplicate the spherical field uh, in my object manager. So now we have two of them. I will then select the fall off and drag my second spherical field in here. Um, the order doesn't really matter, uh, but what does matter is whichever one is on top, the blending mode is set to max. And so now I can take the second spherical field, move it to a different spot, and we can see it now has connected all the pieces that were are inside our um, second fall off. And so now if I hit play, 
And see, we have two larger pieces. And I could keep doing this for as many fall offs uh, or spherical fields as I want um, to get some nice variation in the size of these. Now, the last thing uh, I wanted to touch on with the Voronoi fracture was going back to the sources tab. Now, um, as I mentioned, by default, we have this point generator, which is just this random way of creating these um, fragments. Um, and uh, we mentioned the point amount can add more or less, but we also have a shader source um, that we can include here. So if I just turn this off, add a shader source, I can then come in here and add a shader such as a noise or you know a layer um, in order to get uh, some pieces generated differently. Now I mentioned the noise because you know really it's not all that different than the um, point generator, uh, but we do have some more options obviously inside of here. But you could also combine this in say a layer shader where you could have multiple noises stacked on top of each other with different sizes. So if I switch this one to multiply, maybe lower the um, opacity a little bit, I could come in here and set the scale much lower. And that in theory, although it seems to really have freaked things out a little bit, oh, uh, should give us um, a little bit more variety with the size of our pieces. And it seems to be doing that, right? We got a little bit of a smaller piece there, larger piece here, okay? So this is another way we can get some different sizes with our um, generator, the way these different pieces are uh, created. And so between the different fall offs, all right, between you know, working with different generators, different distribution sources, you really can get some different um, sizes to these pieces. Now, I would also like to point out, these aren't the only two options you have here. Let's say you were trying to do like a baseball through a pane of glass or something. You could take a sphere, right? Maybe it's a cannonball going through a wall, go to the Voronoi fracture and you can drag in the sphere as a source. So I can now take this sphere and it is going to impact and help decide how those different pieces or fragments are going to be created. Okay, so that is a quick look at the Voronoi fracture, how you can use it for some MoGraph related purposes, apply effectors to it, or um, work with it in regards to dynamics. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. As always, if there's anything else you guys would like to see, please just let me know and take care.